Spotify gets into the video game. Smartwatch maker Pebble might be in a bind. And will you control HomeKit devices from an iOS app? It's Wednesday, May 20th, and this is Crunch Report. So we told you last week that Apple's getting ready to launch, or at least announce, the first HomeKit-enabled devices next month, likely in time for WWDC, which starts on June 8th. We already know that HomeKit will allow iOS devices to control connected home accessories, and today 9to5Mac reports that it'll all go through a central app potentially called Home. Yeah, that makes sense. The app may offer wireless discovery of local HomeKit devices, so you can pair them, and then arrange them into virtual rooms to mirror physical home setups, kind of like Sonos, but I guess for everything. The same report says that Apple TV will be a hub for all of your HomeKit devices as well. So when I say Spotify, you probably think streaming music, right? That's what the company already does quite well, actually. It's kind of the front runner in that industry. But at an event in New York today, Spotify announced a few new things. Personalized playlists, which will take into account a bunch of stuff like what music you've listened to in the past, your age, where you live, even the time of day. Maybe you need to wake up to something really peppy because you're depressed, I don't know. The company says that it can do all of this from the data that it's already collected, which is 25 billion hours of listening since the service launched. And they use that to understand how you stream music, when you listen to different music, how similar you are to other Spotify users. But that's not all. Spotify is also getting into podcast and even video. In fact, they have some media partners like NBC, Slate, ABC, Condé Nast Brands, a bunch of them. Although it sounds like, at least at first, the content will be mostly clips from existing shows. I don't know who wants to watch that, but they're gonna try. Here's the coolest part of the announcement by far, at least if you're a runner. A new running feature that uses the sensors of your phone, the accelerometer, the gyroscope, etc., to figure out your running pace and then serve you a playlist with the perfect beats per minute in each song, which would still be tailored to your genre preferences. It's perfect. Spotify is even creating a new format of music that it says is a composition that changes if you speed up or if you slow down in the middle of a song. Mind-blowing. The new Spotify will launch in the US, UK, Germany, and Sweden today with running experiences launching later this summer. Okay, have you heard of a startup called Tilt? It used to be called Crowd Tilt. It lets people raise money for all sorts of events. Uh, making t-shirts for a sports team, say. Raising money for, for a school fundraiser. A modern day bake sale, I guess, which happens to be worth around 400 million, sources tell TechCrunch. Now, if enough people commit to fund a project, the way it works is it tilts toward the project that's happening, right? That's what it means by tilt. What's interesting, though, with Tilt's growth is some of the markets other than the US are growing much faster. In fact, Tilt launched in Canada last year and says that that market is growing faster than it did its first year in the US. It's also soft launched in the UK, specifically gaining ground at universities. In fact, Tilt already has roughly 400 college ambassadors and says they expect to have more than 1,000 by the end of August. These are people who can help users uh, figure out smaller young person type funding goals, like let's say a grocery fund for a sorority or a shared cable bill. One of Tilt's next potential markets is Asia, which already has quite a few people using peer-to-peer -peer payment networks already at least familiar with them. As for Tilt's competition, TechCrunch reported recently that GoFundMe is raising money at a $500 million valuation, so I think it's safe to say crowdfunding is still pretty hot. Smartwatch maker Pebble seems to be in a little trouble. Sources close to the company tell TechCrunch's resident watch enthusiast John Biggs, seriously, he just wrote a book on watches, that the company is having growth problems and has turned to a Silicon Valley bank for a $5 million loan and a $5 million line of credit after VCs in Silicon Valley declined to invest new capital. Pebble had no comment on the rumors. You might remember, though, that the company raised $20 million via Kickstarter, which is about $18 million after Kickstarter takes its fee, but still kind of a lot of money, but reportedly needs more to stay afloat. The company currently has about 150 employees, but a source says a lot of those employees are unhappy with the direction of the company now that Apple and Android and others are safely in the watch game. If you are a cord cutter or a cord cut curious person and you have an Xbox One, 
got some good news for you. Microsoft is now offering a digital TV tuner designed for the console, which means over-the-air TV support, which also means that you can pair the new tuner hardware with an HDTV broadcast antenna to get live TV signals, along with compatibility with Snap for side-by-side -side TV and gaming, Connect for voice control, good stuff. It can also stream TV to other devices via the Xbox Smart Glass apps on Windows, Windows Phone, iOS, and Android. And you can also pause live TV for up to 30 minutes, then rewind and fast forward through that content. So it's not quite an OTA DVR, but it'll still come in handy. An over-the-air TV bundle that includes the tuner and a Mohu Leaf 50 antenna, I actually have one of those, they're great, is available through Microsoft stores for about $100, or the tuner is available separately for $59.99 at Microsoft stores and Amazon. Parkers. And that is the report for today. I'm Sarah Lane, thanks for watching. Crunch Report airs Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, right here on TechCrunch.com. We'll see you tomorrow.